so those are my top five recommend. Oh, sorry, that was only four, wasn't it? My name is Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a top five science fiction books for people who don't read science fiction. Science fiction is my favorite genre, if you couldn't tell from my channel name, as well as almost anything I've ever said. I do think it's the kind of genre that tends to intimidate people if they're not familiar with it, just because, like, it, I don't know what it is about it, but it just like seems really inaccessible. And so I have five books here that I think are really good for people who maybe don't know where to start, but are interested in kind of branching out into the world of sci-fi. So I guess I'm just going to talk about those now, probably would be a good idea. All right, so the first book I have is a lot of people's first introduction to science fiction, and a lot of times people don't even realize that that's what they're reading, and that is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingle. This book is technically in like the science fantasy, like subgenre, I guess. Um, so it's like, it's a fantasy book, there's a lot of like kind of magical elements to it and otherworldly characters, but the, the very concept of the book itself, the wrinkle in time, which in the book is called a tesseract, is essentially a wormhole. And it's written for like a middle grade audience, but I do think it still reads well as an adult, although I have to admit I haven't read this book in a long ass time. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of fantasy and you would like to kind of dip your toes in the sci-fi pool, you should give this one a go. Also, a movie came out recently, so you could read it and then watch that and then you could, you know, feel really cool. The next one I have is The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. This book blends a lot of genres. It's got science fiction, of course, or I wouldn't be talking about it, as well as like drama and romance and suspense, and it all reads like a standard piece of literary fiction. The language in it is beautiful. I mean, it won the Booker Prize, so like that's pretty impressive. Margaret Atwood is wonderful, and in general, I think everybody should read pretty much anything she's ever written. But this book, it's like a story within a story, and there's like mystery and all kinds of stuff going on. And like you should give this a try if you haven't yet, and you really like literary fiction. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about is my number one absolute favorite book of all time. So I've mentioned it before, and that is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This book is a science fiction. It's basically takes place around like a fictional medical procedure that can artificially increase someone's IQ. And it's the story of the character that undergoes this experimental procedure and um, the effects that it has on his life and his relationships. And so it's a really, really character driven story, which makes it really, really easy to read. It's super emotional. It's beautiful. It makes me cry. But it's got that like, those like sci fi bones and like you should absolutely read this if you haven't. It is this is the novel. There was also a short story version of this published. But like, honestly, just read the novel. It's like, tiny and it's wonderful and everybody should read it whether they want to read sci-fi or not. Just read this book. <laughs> All right, the next one I have definitely dives a little deeper into like the science fiction-y side of things, but it's honestly fucking hilarious and it's by one of my favorite authors and it is Futuristic Violence and Fancy Suits by David Wong. David Wong wrote the John Dies at the End books, which are horror comedies. This is um, the beginning of his next series, which is dystopian slash sci-fi comedy. So it's meant to make you laugh and it takes place in this dystopian world. It's really weird. It's like got like a mob boss in it and a cat that smells really bad and it's got like a 
pretty average girl female protagonist who like ends up being pretty kick-ass in the end and like I said it's just really funny and um, if you already like dystopian but you don't like any of the like or you haven't really read much of like harder sci-fi and you like to laugh this is a really good transitional book and I highly recommend it just in general I really really enjoyed it. Next one that I recommend <laughs> is The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I couldn't go an entire science fiction video without talking about John Wyndham. He's the best. <laughs> He's the best. The Chrysalids is a dystopian and it again kind of reads like a little bit more like literary fiction or like a dystopian without as many science fiction elements but it's about a society where like being genetically different than other people is so 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 frowned upon and they will like mutilate people and cast them out of society and it's about this group of young people who have a genetic difference that you can't see and they're like able to communicate with each other telepathically. It's really interesting and the dystopian society is really interesting because it takes place in like a distant future but it kind of feels like it's taking place way, way, way in the past. Like the way that the society is, it's like almost Amish feeling. I don't know. I really, really love that book. It's my second favorite John Wyndham book. And um, in general, I just think it's a great one for people to read. But I also think it's a really good like ease from literary fiction into dystopian sci-fi. It's just, it's a good one. You should read it. It's also very short, which helps because it's like small doses. So those are my top five uh, recommendations, sci-fi recommendations for people who don't read sci-fi. You would think that I would be able to say that, but apparently that's very difficult for me. But I also have a little uh, bonus recommendation slash extra credit book series that I would like to recommend to people. And so this is once you've like read some of these maybe and you're feeling a little more comfortable with some of the sci-fi concepts and you kind of want to get into some more aggressively science fiction-y stuff, but this still reads really easily. And that is the Talents series by Anne McCaffrey. This uh, book is called Pegasus in Flight. This series is like basically the discovery and establishment of the Talents, which are a group of people who have like special skills basically um either they can find things with their like locate things with their mind like they basically have an internal like tracking device for items or they can there are empaths there are telepaths there are telekinetics and these are all they're originally being kind of like persecuted and then they find a way to spin it so that um they become an asset to society. These books are just really interesting. Like they're decidedly science fiction, but the talents themselves, like the actual talents that people have, feel almost more like magics. And it's really good for people who are like getting more comfortable with sci-fi, but still kind of have more of like a personal background in reading fantasy. Cause it's like sort of like magic, but with a scientific explanation. And I don't know, they're just really good. I actually had never heard of these. And then two years ago, the entire series was given to me as a Christmas gift. And I'm really glad that they were because I've really enjoyed, I haven't finished the entire collection of them yet because it's like quite a few books, but the ones that I've read, I've really liked. I really like the characters. I really like the concept and Anne McCaffrey's writing is really, really great. That's it for me. Those are my top recommendations for people who don't like sci-fi but want to. Yeah, let me know what you think or if you have any suggestions, if you're already a sci-fi fan, um, leave them in the comments. I'm sure people would love to see them. Um, find all my social media links down, down yonder. Will I ever get better at closing out a video? Dunno, subscribe, stay tuned, find out. Have a great day, bye. <laughs>